Aloha, welcome to day number 68. Before we jump into God's word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now, just thank you so much for who you are and what you do for us every single day. Uh, we thank you that things are starting to slightly go back to normal and uh, Lord, I do pray that there would not be a spike in the virus and uh, just pray that everybody continues to practice social distancing and make wise decisions. And Lord, I pray that uh, this video is honoring and glorifying to you and for anybody that's watching it, pray that their hearts are tender, minds are focused on you and your word alone and remove the devil and his distractions. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, open your Bibles to the New Testament today, Luke chapter number 19, Luke chapter number 19. Maybe you've heard a song as a kid, or if you haven't, you can look it up later. Uh, we're going to be talking about Zacchaeus. And I remember singing that song uh, as a child. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. And there's more to the song, but I'm not, I have a horrible singing voice, so I'm not going to go through it. But we're just going to look at 10 verses today talking about Zacchaeus. All right? So starting in Luke chapter number 19, verse number 1, it says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Verse 2. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. All right, so we get Zacchaeus' job title, chief among the publicans, and we get that he's a very wealthy man. All right, now we're going to come back to verse number two in just a little bit. All right, so keep that in mind. He's chief among the publicans. That's the main thing you need to remember, all right? And he's very, very wealthy. Uh, verse number three, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. So Jesus is coming through. Zacchaeus has heard about this guy. And this is interesting. Uh, you know, Jesus is doing a lot of traveling, and Zacchaeus has gotten word about Jesus. Listen, back then, they didn't have Instagram. They didn't have Facebook. They didn't have phones, no texting, nothing like that. So it was all word of mouth. That means this guy heard it, somehow it went to this country and then went to this city and went to this town and word has rapidly spread about this man named Jesus who is performing miracles, who claims to be the son of God. And it says there in verse number three, Zacchaeus, he wants to see him. He has a desire to see him. He's like, I gotta see this guy. All right, I, got, I just got it. something, something. I gotta see him. Right, and but here's the problem. It says he could not press, or could not for the press, which means there's a huge crowd. All right, and and remember the song Zacchaeus was a wee little man. It says there he was little stature. He was probably very short, very scrawny. He couldn't get through. Maybe he was like five foot two, five foot three. I don't know, but he was very short, and he was not getting through that crowd. And look what happens in verse number four. And he didn't. He doesn't just give up. Look, he says, and he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Now I looked up. Uh, I'm not a big plant person or a big tree person, but oftentimes when Miss Kathleen and I would go to Wahiwa Botanical Garden or if we're anywhere where there's plants and trees and stuff like that. Miss Kathleen is like, oh, that one is this one, and that one is this one. And she could tell me every single thing about this plant, and I just kind of nod along like, oh, okay, and I just don't know anything about it. But I did look up about a sycamore tree. He said, well, how is this short guy going to climb a tree? A sycamore tree was usually about 30 to 40 feet high, but the benefit of the tree is the branches usually grew kind of like a stack, you know, or stairs or, or rungs kind of thing. And so Zacchaeus, even though he was really short, uh, this type of tree was very easy for him to climb. And so he was determined to see Jesus. He didn't care about this crowd. He saw the tree. He's like, I'm going to see Jesus no matter what. So verse number five, it says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Now we're going to take a break for just a second. Uh, hold your place here and turn with me to James chapter number four, because I do believe this ties in. James chapter 
Number four, if you need to pause the video to find your place, that's fine. But James chapter number four, we're going to look at verse number eight. Just the, just the first part. It says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Basic, basically what this means is you get closer to God and God will come to you. You seek God, God will come to you. And that's exactly what happens in Luke 19 uh, verses 1 through 4. Zacchaeus has a desire, a determination. I want to see Jesus. I want to get as close to him as I possibly can. And then we'll look what the Lord does. Verse number 5. Jesus does make his way through this large crowd. We don't know how large it is, but it's large enough to keep Zacchaeus out. He makes his way through the crowd. He goes straight to the tree, looks up, and Zacchaeus, come on, and he knows him by name, come on down, for today I must abide at thy house. Zacchaeus sought to see Jesus, and so Jesus came to him. Same thing, James chapter 4, verse number 8. Guys, we have to be the ones to make that first step. Maybe you're wondering, where is God? Why hasn't he listened to my prayers? All this kind of stuff. Are you seeking him? Are you determined to go past the obstacles that may be in your way? For Zacchaeus, it was a large crowd, but he didn't let that stop him. Listen, the devil's going to throw things in your way. The world's going to throw things in your way to keep you from going closer to God, but you can't let that stop you. You've got to be determined to get closer to God. And guess what? Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Jesus breaks through the crowd. Zacchaeus, I must abide at thy house. All right, he says, let's go to your house. Let's go hang out. Let's break bread together. I've got some great news for you. Verse number six, it says, and he made haste. That means he went very quickly, came down, and received him joyfully. Jesus, right? Verse number seven, and when they saw it, okay, this is the crowd, when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Okay, so the crowd is now murmuring. If you remember murmuring, they are complaining. Okay, now this is when I said, let's go back to verse number two. It says, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was the chief among the publicans. This means he had the highest rank as a tax collector. And from what history tells us, most of the time, uh, tax collectors back then, especially if they were high ranking, they would often cheat their own people out of money, or they would raise taxes really high to keep the people poor, to keep them in need. And the fact that they accuse Zacchaeus in verse number seven of being a sinner, uh, I don't think they're talking in terms of his soul, which I do believe he's a sinner and he's lost. But I think they're saying he's a sinner because he's a cheat, because he has wronged them in the past, and they think Jesus should pick someone more worthy to go to their house. Jesus should pick someone that doesn't have a bad reputation. That I mean, really, honestly, if we're, we're breaking it down, these people hate Zacchaeus. That's basically what it all comes down to. And they are upset that Jesus is there. But Jesus says in the Bible, he has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Zacchaeus is clearly lost. And so he's there. Hey, listen, I'm going to share the gospel with you. Guys, we can't expect a sinner not to sin. We have to share the gospel with them. Just recently in the news, you know, unfortunately, uh, there was a cop and he put his knee on the neck of an African-American man, and that man ended up dying. And this cop has been fired, there are riots, there, there's injustice, and all these different things, and, and it's totally understandable, uh, but I just wonder with this police officer if that would have happened if he was a Christian. If someone would, I, I, and maybe they have, but I'm just wondering, did someone take the time to share the gospel with that police officer? Did someone take the time to pray for him? Because listen, prayer changes racism, all right? Prayer changes the heart. God can pierce the heart of any wicked heart, of any wicked soul. But we have to be the ones to go out there and share the gospel. We can't be uh, judging people. We can't be sitting back, I hate that person. He should never get the gospel. No, Jesus came to seek and save 
that was lo which is lost. And that situation that happened recently is unfortunate. And uh, the best thing that we can do is pray. And Jesus knew that with Zacchaeus. And look, we continue to go on in verse number eight. It says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. This also lets us know that Zacchaeus was a cheat because he says, if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, basically saying, if I have lied, if I have cheated them, I'm going to give them not only what I owe them, but four times what I owe them, right? And so he's also going to give half what he gives to the poor. Now, I want to be clear about this. Uh, Zacchaeus did not have to do this, all right? This is Zacchaeus's choice, but I also want to be clear, this is not how Zacchaeus is getting saved. He's not like, oh, if I give my money, I'll get to heaven. And this is what proves it right here. Look at verses 9 and 10. It says, And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation. Come to this house, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. Verse 10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So, in, in between verses number seven and eight, we don't see or actually hear Zacchaeus accept Christ as his personal savior, but we do know it happens based off of verses nine and 10. Verse number eight is what Zacchaeus is making a promise after he has accepted Christ as his personal savior. Giving money to the poor and giving money back to people uh, that you possibly cheated, it does not get you to heaven. It's a good thing. Zacchaeus is doing a good thing, but we have to remember the only way to get to heaven is accepting Christ as your personal Savior, having that relationship with him. Verse number 10, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So, a couple of things that we can take away from this message. Are you determined to seek out Jesus? And listen, even when you are a Christian, we still need to continually seek him out every single day. Seeking him out by going to his word. Uh, after this video is over, read the Bible, um, pray, give your prayer requests. Remember, be a pest to the Lord. Share your praises. What are you thankful for? And these are not things that you need to text me, okay? You need to uh, do this between you and God. Other thing, uh, maybe there are some people in your life, they are sinners. They have yet to accept Christ, and maybe you kind of wrote them off a little bit, and you say, ah, they're never going to accept Christ. Listen, they may be, be like Zacchaeus, living in sin, living in sin, living in sin, and all of a sudden, they hear about Jesus. That's what happens. Zacchaeus heard about Jesus, sparked his interest, and said, all right, I want to know more. Maybe that's what's going to happen in the person that you know. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a classmate. I don't know. But maybe you just start talking about the Lord, and all of a sudden it sparks their interest. And before you know it, they have more of an interest, and they start asking questions. They seek Jesus out, and then you've led them to the Lord. Okay? Pray for them. Remember, Jesus wants to go after the people that are lost. And he wants to continue to have a relationship with you as a child of God. All right, a couple of questions here for you. Number one, what is the name of the man that wants to see Jesus? Spelling does count, so make sure. Use your Bible. Number two, what was the type of tree the man climbed in order to see Jesus? Spelling does count. Number three, why did the people complain about Jesus going to his house? And number four, how will you get closer to God today? We love you and aloha.